Number 41. Determine the bond order of each member of the following groups and determine which member of each group is predicted by the molecular orbital model, model to have the strongest bond. Okay, so then we have our little trio here. We have N2, N2+, plus, and N2-. minus. Now, we need to find the bond order for each. Now, bond order in the formula comes from bonding and antibonding electrons. And we could only find the bonding and the antibonding electrons is if we draw out a molecular orbital configuration. So that's what this mess is down here. But I promise it's not as scary as it looks. But just know that these configurations are reliant on valence electrons. So the first thing that we have to find out is we have to find out how many valence electrons are in N2. So... Uh, always good to start off with the one that has no charge because then you can just manipulate your configuration based off of what the charge is. So I'm going to find out my valence electrons for just N2. So here we go. We have N2. Now, if we look up nitrogen on the periodic table, we will notice that nitrogen is in group 5, right? 5A or 15, depending on how your periodic table is structured. But the lucky number here, which is my lucky number, is five. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. Each nitrogen has five valence electrons. But if we have two of them, you have double the fun. So since I have two nitrogens and each one has five valence electrons, you just multiply them. So two times five is a total of 10 valence electrons. And this is going to come in hand or in hand? Or handy. This will come, I guess this will be handy uh, for when we actually do our configuration. Now the next thing we have to know is which configuration are we going to pick? Are we going to pick the top one or the bottom one? The two configurations are different because of the grouping on the periodic table. But just like we said, since nitrogen is in group 5a, I'm going to pick the first molecular orbital configuration. So the bottom one is not for this question. And I just want to point out here that you will go by your element, the group number, not where you end off if you lose electrons, not where you end off if you gain. It's always just where the element is. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to pick this for N2. And now I'm going to get rid of this. If you want to pause the video to just write down the other one, that's fine with me. But just, you know, we don't need it, so bye-bye. And now let me throw this over here. Actually, we'll do it in the middle, and then if I have to move it, I'll move it. So now there's a couple of things that we have to do in order to make this molecular orbital configuration nitrogens. First thing is we have to state what S's and what P's are we in. This goes from the valence electrons which for these come from the period number. And if we look on the periodic table once again, nitrogen is in period two. So twos all around, two S's, and then you're all your two P's. So PY, PZ, PX, PY, PZ, and PX. Now there's two different types of molecular orbitals. There are sigma molecular orbitals and pi. But just know that for each molecular orbital, you're only allowed to fit two max electrons. So here, I have a total of 10 that I have to divvy up in between all of these orbitals. But the rule is, is that you always go from lowest energy all the way to highest energy. So these are written so that they are from lowest to highest. So you will start dropping your electrons in this orbital then move on, then move on, until you reach 10. So let's kick it off, shall we? The first one, I can only fit a max of 2. So 2 goes in here, and I don't like that color. So we'll put the 2 in here, and there you go. Well, that's not 10, so i got to keep going. I'm going to put in 2 more, so that's 2. I'm at 4 now, i got to keep going. Now these are grouped together mainly because they have the same amount of energy. So they're on the same energy level. Two electrons max here, two electrons max here, so that's a total of four electrons that are allowed here. 
And 2, 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. I must keep going. And we have this one, right? So we have 2 more. So let's see. 2, 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. 9, 10. Now the other ones are 0 electrons. So 0 and 0. This next orbital we might get into, so I'll leave that one. But the second orbital out, there's no way that we will be touching this with nitrogen, so I'm just going to eliminate it. So now, I'm just going to draw, you know, throw this over here. Because from this, we can now find the bond order. And a bond order is very, uh, it's an easy formula. It's this one right here. Bond order is just equal to your number of bonding electrons in your configuration minus your number of antibonding divided by two. The antibonding ones are really easy to find because they're the ones that have the star. So look for those stars. Those are your antibonding. All the other ones that don't have a star, right? These don't have a star. Those are your bonding electrons. So let's find out the bond order for N2. So a bond order is always something minus something divided by two. Find the antibonding first. I have two over here and zero in this case. So I have two antibonding, the rest are bonding. So two electrons here. I got four electrons, so that's six, and then two more, so that's eight. So eight minus two. So now let's just do the math. 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have a bond order of 3 here for N2. No units for bond order. They're just kind of numbers. Now let's move on to the next one. And I'm going to do N2 with the plus. Now remember, a plus 1, this is a plus 1, right? A plus 1 means that you lost 1 electron from your neutral molecular configuration. So what I can do is I can just copy this and maybe I'll paste it and I'll put a little dot here. And all we have to do is get rid of one electron. Well, clearly there's no electrons here, so I could even get rid of this and we're losing, so we could just keep going. This one is the last one. When you're losing electrons, you go from the back up because you want to lose electrons with the higher amount of energy. So this two will drop down to a one. So I now have a one here and that's all that was changed. And now from there, I can do my bond order. How easy is that, right? So bond order, something minus something else divided by two. Look for antibonding. I got two, so that didn't change. Let's see what's going on with bonding. Two, four, and one, so that's seven now. So let's do the math. Seven minus two is five. Five divided by two is 2.5. And that's okay. Bond orders can be fractions, right? They can be fractions, they can be decimals. That's totally okay. Last bond order we have to figure out is N2 minus. So N2 with the minus sign. Well, now the minus, this means negative one, right? This means that you're now gaining one electron. And just remember that you gain from your neutral molecule. So I'm gonna copy this. And now I'm going to work with it. I need to gain an electron. Well, I'm not going to gain it here because 2 is the max for this molecular orbital. So I go to the next one. And now this will be a 1. And that's how you gain that last electron. That's all the changes. So we can go straight to the bond order. So bond order is something minus something divided by 2. Look for those antibonding first, and I just like to do that first. Here's two. Here's the antibonding, because they're all stars. That's one. So now your antibonding is a total of three. 
bonding, two, four, so that's a total of six, seven, eight. And now, let's do the math. Eight minus three is five, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, right? So five, oh boy. Five divided by two, this one looks like it's gonna be the same number. Five divided by two is 2.5. Um, and yeah, there you go. So now, those are all your bond orders. So the bond order of N2 is three, the bond order of N2 plus one is two and a half, and the bond order of N2 minus one is two and a half. But the last thing here is that we have to find out which one was the strongest bond. Now the strongest bond is just the highest bond order. Because these numbers represent what type of bonds are really happening here. Three means a triple bond, three lines. So three is the highest number out of here. So N2 without a charge would be the strongest bond. And that is the final answer for this question. That one was nice. What'd you think? Hopefully this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, just gets the word out there in the YouTube universe that this channel exists, this educational channel, free education for all. I mean, that's kind of great, right? So thank you for doing that. And we'll keep producing more videos to help you guys out. You keep watching them. Can't get any better than that. So I will talk to you later. All right, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.